3NX. For more locations, Inspired on Liberty Radio. Crippling diagnosis, ineffective treatments, relentless chronic pain. Many have lost their will to live as their quality of life has deteriorated. Joy and laughter have been replaced by groans of pain and suffering, leaving them feeling trapped after exhausting all options. However, it is in these moments of despair that the power of faith can shine through, offering a new path to healing and hope. It's time to reclaim your health and conquer every challenge. Every Tuesday, we shall have the Mantle of Miracles services featuring the Corridor of Miracles with 12 disciples. These 12 servants of God will form a corridor and proclaim your healing by faith as you walk through. Join us in the Cathedral of Miracles every Tuesday only at 7.30 p.m. at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London, N4 3NX. Invite everyone in need of healing, including yourself and declare your healing and restoration through faith in God's Word. After the world was created, do you know what the first thing was that God did? Separation. He did this on purpose so that there would be order. This is also true in life. Who can prosper or what project can succeed if there is no order? Therefore, the act of separation, that is, putting things in their proper place, is the main step for those who want to achieve their goals. This is also true with God. When we put aside what belongs to Him, our first fruits, we enjoy complete order and fulfillment as the benefits of obedience. This Sunday, we have the Feast of the First Fruits with the consecration of the second. At 10 a.m. at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London, N4 3NX or at your nearest universal church. Good evening and welcome to the first Be Inspired of the Week. We'll be here together the whole week and we're live here from our studio right now. The whole Bible tells us how the, the action of separating the first fruits is an act of recognizing that God is the one who supplies everything that we have. And as opposed to what many people say, many people think and say that the, the New Testament abolishes the first fruits. And actually, you will not be able to find anything in the Old or the New Testament that abolishes the action of separating what belongs to God. A lot of people even say, well, but the Lord Jesus criticized the hypocrites for giving the tithe. The Lord Jesus did not criticize the hypocrites, the scribes, the Pharisees for giving the tithe. He said that they should not stop giving the tithe and continue to do other things like righteousness, that these two things are important. And so when we separate our first fruits, just like in the beginning, every time there was a harvest, there was the, the feast of the first fruits, which was nothing more, nothing less than to separate a portion, a tenth of that harvest, and take it to the temple and to say, Lord, here it is. This belongs to you because everything that we are harvesting today comes 
from your hands. And today we do the same. When we uh, have our income, when we work and we, we build a life from everything that comes to our hands, separating the first fruits, we're doing the same thing that was done in the past. We come to God and we say, Lord, thank you for the harvest that I had and everything that comes to my hands, I recognize that it comes from you. This Sunday in all our UCKGs all over the world and here in the UK will be no different. We will have the feast of the first fruits, honoring God with what he brings to our hands. We are going now to watch Nayara's testimony, someone who for a long time, she walked away from the presence of God and suffered greatly because of that. Understand, when a person walks away from the presence of God, God does not punish them with suffering. That suffering, when it happens, it's nothing more than a consequence of our decision of walking away from God. But today, Nayara is a new person, full of the Holy Spirit. Pay attention to her testimony. And when we come back immediately after the testimony, you will see a video from Pastor David, who is now uh, at the Temple of Solomon. He recorded the video for us earlier. You're going to get to watch this video here firsthand in tonight's program. Faith helped me a lot in my journey to being different and changing my life because I feel like I had no hope before and faith gave me that hope. I didn't have faith in myself, but I had faith that God could change my life. From the moment that I had that faith that God could change my life and it didn't matter how impossible it looked, that's when my life started moving forward. So at the moment, my life is completely different. I can actually sleep now. I don't need to be around people all the time. I have a better relationship with my family. I have friends that help me to actually move forward in my life. I actually take my job and my studies seriously now. So everything's different because I look at life from a different perspective now. It's been not even a year, probably seven months since my life has been better. Because of the faith that I learned to have, it helped me to become a different person because I no longer depended on my weaknesses, on, on the things that I didn't like or on the situations that was going on around me. I no longer depended on how I felt about things. I depended on my faith. I depended on God 100%. Growing up, I lived in a house that was filled with a lot of neglect, a lot of fights. My parents had a very broken marriage. It wasn't a happy household at all. And when I would go to school, it was the same thing. I was getting bullied. So I didn't have peace anywhere I went. And I already started having this anger inside of me, this anxiety inside of me as a little kid. My parents and my family started attending the church and I was accompanying them. However, I wasn't taking it seriously. I was there because they were there. And as I grew up, I started to have this curiosity for the world, curiosity for the things of the world, because all I had ever known was coming to church because of my parents. And I got to a certain age when I was 18 that I got involved with a lot of friends. At the point I started dating as well, someone who wasn't of God. And I ended up leaving the church at the age of 18. So as soon as I left the church, my life started going completely downhill because I started doing things that I wasn't doing before. I started getting interested and influenced. I always thought before that I was someone who was strong-minded, who didn't get influenced by other people, but that went literally out the window. I started drinking. I started getting home really, really late because I was partying. I was smoking at one point. So it kind of kept adding to the depression that I was feeling. It kept adding to the anxiety. I started to have a lot of panic attacks. It got really, really bad to the point where I had no more way out. I knew that no one could help me. And it was really bad to the point where my head was so full of thoughts that I would cry to my partner, to my friends, asking them to help my thoughts stop because it was getting to a point where I was having a lot of suicidal thoughts because it was just like, I was never able to have peace in my mind for one second of the day. And even when I was going through suicidal thoughts, I remember, I wrote like a little letter to everybody and I prayed to God and I said, God, I don't even have the strength to take my own life. So I asked that you take it because I just didn't have the strength. I didn't have the capacity. I literally felt like the biggest failure. I, I had so much hatred for myself, but my relationship was the only thing that was keeping me going. And when we broke up, for me, that was my breaking point. I said, now I have completely no one to live for. I have nothing to live for. That's when I said, now it's over. There's, there's nothing left for me. As my family was attending the Universal Church at that point, 
I thought this is this is the only help that I can get. Otherwise, if if not even this helps, then I'm gonna have to take my own life. And I went to my mom and I spoke to her. I reached out to my sister and they were more than willing to help me to start this new journey. And that's when I saw, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a try because there's nothing left for me. When I felt judged by everyone outside in the world and when I first stepped foot in there, everyone was so welcoming, everyone was happy to see me. I feel like now it's like my place where I go to see God and it's just my second home, it means a lot to me. Being universal is like being a part of the army of God. I never understood before why I went through what I went through, but now I can use my experiences to help people that are feeling the same way. For me, learning to use my faith wasn't an easy thing at all because I was someone who went a lot by my emotions. I went a lot by how I was feeling. If things were going wrong around me, I was getting really, really stressed. I learned that our heart can be very deceitful, so we can't be based on our emotions or what's going on around us. So for me, it was a process. It had to be step by step, using my faith in little things. Putting it into practice was day to day. It was when things go wrong, you can't just be emotional and be like, oh no, you have to put it in practice. You have to be like, no, I know that God's gonna so I know God's with me. And as my faith started growing, I was able to use it in bigger situations. When bigger things would happen, I wouldn't be scared. I wouldn't be anxious because I knew that my faith was in God. I knew how to practice my faith now. After using my faith around a month afterwards, that's when my life started moving forward. That's when I felt stronger, more capable to do things because I was no longer relying on my capability. I was relying on God's capability. As a universal person now, I participate in CBC with the kids. I feel like it's very important to teach the kids and now that they're young so that they don't have to go through the things that we go through as adults. I also participate in the youth group. I go to evangelism. Whenever someone's there and they're in need of something, in need of advice, I'm always ready to be there. Before receiving the Holy Spirit, I feel like I saw people completely differently. I didn't see them as souls. I didn't see them as people who needed help. I saw them as people who were just going through the same thing or even worse than I was and I wasn't able to help anyone because I wasn't okay. So after receiving the Holy Spirit, after realizing how much I had changed, how much my life had changed, when I saw them, I saw people who needed help people who needed to know God like I did, people who needed to learn faith like I did. The way that I see myself now compared to how I used to see myself is completely different because there was a lot of things inside of me that no one knew what was going on. So before I was really depressed, I had all these things inside of me. I had all these grudges because I wasn't able to forgive. I had all this sadness. There was a lot of things going on, but now I no longer feel this way. I don't, I don't feel the neglect that I used to feel for myself. I learned to forgive. I learned to let go of things. I learned to fully let God heal the wounds that I had, take away these bad roots inside of me. After receiving the Holy Spirit, he made me see that I was his creation. And because I love the creator, I can now love his creation. I no longer had that hatred. I no longer despise myself. So through the power of faith, I conquered many things. I conquered an amazing relationship with my family. I conquered going to uni and actually having inspirations, knowing what I was doing. I conquered different things in my financial life as well. Before I was always living with barely any money because I I was always just spending on stupid things. So God gave me the wisdom as well. I was able to conquer wisdom. For me, the biggest thing that I was able to conquer was the Holy Spirit, because now I know that I don't walk alone. Everything in my life is different. I completely depend on him. There's no way that I regret coming back to the Universal Church and learning how to use my faith because it completely changed my life. It gave me a new perspective of how to live. That's where I met God. So I definitely don't regret anything. Hello everyone, I'm here in the Temple of Solomon, just in front of the flags, in preparation for the raising of the flag ceremony on Wednesday. And I also have here the requests of all those who sacrificed. I have here the request of United Kingdom, Ireland, Sweden, Norway, and also Malta. And we believe you who sacrificed for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, this is your time. In fact, it's a promise. It's a promise that you shall receive the Holy Spirit. And all those who sacrificed, believing in this promise, believe that this is your time. Some of you may already have the assurance, and some of you are seeking. And I believe that very soon you're going to receive the Holy Spirit. We're here with many pastors, actually from so many countries. Every single flag here represents a country of the Universal Church. As you can see around, you can even look around, there's so many pastors around. Everyone's recording 
uh, a video to their respective churches. It's a very blessed environment of unity, of togetherness. Everyone's here representing their country. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He brings people together. And you who don't have the Holy Spirit yet, I want you to believe that this is your time. And when the Spirit of God comes upon you, He will transform you, make you a new person, and He will make you a blessing. No longer would you be searching for blessing, but you will be the blessing yourself. It's a pleasure to be here. And we're going to be presenting the request soon on the altar. May God bless you all from United Kingdom, from Ireland, from Sweden, Norway, and Malta. God bless you all. The testimony we saw and what Pastor David said there proves, like the testimony said, like Pastor David said, that when you receive the Holy Spirit, you become the blessing. But last night, or actually today, early morning at dawn, we had a night vigil here at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I wanted to read a verse here with you now that I actually read with people in the night vigil. I believe that this is going to help you. We all are looking for security. People want to buy a house. They want to have a house to their name because a home in their name gives them security. People want a steady job because that gives them security. Many people want to get married because being in a stable relationship brings them security. But the reality is that all of these so-called securities, they are very fickle. How many times have we heard that there was a, a house market crash? How many times have we heard that maybe you experienced having ma being made redundant from your job because you were, you know, that, that company collapsed? So the things that sometimes are supposed to bring us security, overnight they can be taken away from us like a rug pulled from under our feet. And that helps us to reevaluate what is real security. Look what the Lord Jesus said. Let's read together this verse. He said, My Father, who has given them, them, He was talking about His sheep, those who belong to Him. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. You know that a sheep is defenseless. A sheep has no way of defending itself other than running and running very slow, right? So a sheep depends on the shepherd. And the Lord Jesus alluded to this when He said these words. And He said that when people belong to Him, no one will ever be able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. And this is true security. Maybe you do your best to secure your marriage. But a marriage doesn't depend only on you. It depends also on the other person who is with you. What if that person does something to destroy what you built? Same goes for your business. Same goes for your house. I remember when I was a pastor in, in Sweden. The building where we lived, of the flat we rented, went up in flames. And we had to run out of the apartment with nothing but the clothes on our body, not even our wallet. And part of the building went up in flames. The truth is that everything that is security for us can be taken away in an instant. But when a person has the Spirit of God, when they belong to God, the Lord Jesus says that no one can snatch them from the hands of the Father. Snatch them, steal them, take them from the hands of the Father. Pastor Richard, I believe that when a person is baptized with the Holy Spirit, whether that person has a house in their name, is married or not, has the job of their dreams or not, that person is truly secure. On the other hand, when a person has a great home, a great job, a great marriage, many people still feel like at any moment they can lose that. The only security that we can truly have and that we should aim for is the Spirit of God, which means we will never be able to be snatched away from the hands of our God. Yes, Bishop, that's true. Because when someone receives the Holy Spirit, 
they receive the best protection. I would say the only protection that will really cover them in all the areas of their lives. They receive peace. They receive, you know, direction. They receive wisdom. And they receive the protection wherever they are. Because in nowadays, people, they try to do so many things, you know, to be, to receive protection, to be safe. But in reality, there is no protection if it's not under God's wings with the Holy Spirit, Bishop. That's right. How many times, Pastor Richard, we've seen, for example, in the news, not now in the fast of Daniel, but when we're not in the fast of Daniel, we've seen in the news footballers whose houses are burgled. We've, we've, I remember of cases where we saw on the news footballers who were at home with their children, babies, when people broke into the house and their, house, their items were burgled with family inside there. I imagine how powerless that person feels. The person who has a gated fence, you know, uh, with all kinds of security mechanisms, but yet their most Prized possessions are snatched from them. A, a, a mansion with, with huge gates and walls cannot give a person security. Same thing happens for your business. How many people had you know, businesses that were worth billions that now no longer exist? Look at a company like, just as an example, a company like Polaroid. Some of you will be old enough to remember that camera that you would press a button and uh, a film would come out with a picture. Remember that? Where's Polaroid now? Everybody has phones. Everybody has smartphones. You don't need to carry around a picture with you because you have your phone. Almost overnight, that company, I don't know what happened to it. But the truth is, when we have the Spirit of God, we are secure. Maybe you are watching me now and you've been made to feel powerless several times in your life when the things that brought you security were quickly stolen from you. But the Lord Jesus promised that if you are in His hands, no one can snatch you from His hands. And that is the promise of the Holy Spirit. We are found to be secure in His hands. Actually, the verse afterwards says, Jesus said that the Father and I are one, Jesus said. When you have the Holy Spirit, you become one with the Father. Wednesday now will be the last day of the fast of Daniel. Make sure you attend one of the services, even if you don't usually do it. And then you will see that you, once you have Him, no one can snatch you from the hands of your God. I want to offer right now a prayer for you, for God to... To, to stabilize, we can say, your heart and your mind. Because maybe lately you've been feeling like all the things you've achieved can be stolen from you, snatched from you at a moment's notice. But God can bring security. Let's talk to Him now. Let's talk to God. It's time to pray. My Lord, as we heard here tonight, everyone is looking for security. But the world doesn't offer security. If anything, the world offers instability. Even the things that are supposed to bring more security, they only cause more havoc and damage. And now, my Lord, I ask you on behalf of this person that all the security she had ever known has been robbed from her taken away from her. This person who had perhaps the, the dream job and that dream job was taken away from her. This person who had the perfect home, an ideal home, a home to make every neighbor jealous and maybe they lost that also. But when, my Lord, we are in your hands, when we are filled with your spirit, we are secure. You said, my Lord, look at the lily, the lilies of the valleys. 
Look at the birds of the air, who feeds them, yet they never lack anything. Who dresses the lily, the lilies of the valleys, and yet they are more beautiful. Not even Solomon in all his glory was clothed, adorned like the lilies of the valleys. When we are secure in your hands, my Lord, then no one, we know that no one can snatch us from you, can take us away from you. The world can promise to rob us from your presence, but we will never ever be able to, take, to be taken away from your presence. Father, we submit our life into your hands. I pray that you bring safety to this person right now. If they were perhaps tormented within, like Nayara said in her testimony that when she was away from your presence, her, her mind was tormented. Bring peace right now to this person. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless those who are connected with us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Remember that when you belong to Him, through the Holy Spirit, no one can snatch you from His presence. People can even say that they will. <laughs> People can even say that they will snatch you from the hands of God. But that will not happen unless He gives people or whoever His permission. And if you belong to Him, that's not going to happen. I'll see you here on Wednesday in the church. Tomorrow, remember, the church will be open. We'll have here... At 7.30 p.m., the meeting of the 12 apostles, the 12 men of God, you'll be able to touch the mantle so that God can work supernatural healing in your body. And tomorrow we'll be back again at 10 p.m. here on Be Inspired. May God bless you. Bye-bye. This has been Be Inspired on Liberty Radio. If you'd like to donate in support of this work, please do so by any of the following ways. Via online banking using our details on screen. Through the QR code which will take you to the payment page on our website. Or you can gift aid your donation writing through the email address on screen. Thank you for your help.